I'm a native of uh, Burundi, a new American, and uh, we are working on developing a market for ethnic specialty crops uh, here in the Washington DC uh, metro area. Um, how many of you have tried ethnic food in a restaurant? <laughs> oh, pretty, pretty, pretty impressive. You're in DC. Uh, yes, this is DC. And uh, how many have you tried African food? Oh, whoa, everybody. <laughs> so you are in good treat because what we're doing, we're actually trying to grow uh, the ingredients that work with uh, African cuisine. And uh, uh, based on some of the statistics that we have, uh, in this area we have about over probably 200,000 African immigrants in the metro area. Uh, half of it Ethiopian, Nigerians, Ghanaians, Kenyan, Kenyans, South Africans. And um, so we get a map, George, Wash uh, George Mason University, thank you for doing this survey and the data about where they live and where uh, uh, they are located. So we can know how to uh, reach them uh, through our systems. And so this is also the economic opportunity for those who want to grow, uh, the small farmers. There is a farmer down in La Plata, uh, uh, it's called Homestead Farm. What they do, they do uh, pick your own. Uh, so instead of uh, uh, harvesting for people to buy, they allow people to come in, harvest, uh, get it at a discounted pr uh, price. So what you see, you see images like this. And this is in uh, Minnesota and uh, St. Paul, uh, where people wake up early in the morning to go to where the African food is going to be at, and then pick, they buy as a bunch. So here is a Hmong farmer in Minnesota saying, this year I don't have enough vegetables for African people, which is a heartbreaker. You know? So uh, the market is there, we need more land. That's what uh, this Hmong community in Minnesota are saying. We need more land to develop more ethnic, ethnic crops. Um, and uh, so the pick your own will be, look like this. You know, men usually in, uh, in our communities are not really into farming. In Africa, it's mostly women who do most of the work. I'm ashamed to say it, but you know. But when it comes to harvest, you can see the pictures of men there, they go harvest. So we can find a way of using men, you know, uh, when it comes to harvest. So you see them packing a bunch of stuff. This is for a whole year supply because they don't know where they're going to get the next supply. That's why they pick as much as they can. It's a bag of uh, garden eggs, eggplants, a type of eggplants, uh, Scott bonnet papers. Uh, they use a lot of uh, spices in food and some veg leafy, leafy vegetables that they can't find in this area. Uh, and also the U.S. actually tells us that they import a lot of vegetables, fruits and vegetables from outside. Uh, we can help them <coughs> growing them over here. Uh, so about 52% of fresh fruits and uh, 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 vegetables, uh, fresh fruits, 52% of fresh fruits come from outside. They are getting imported. Uh, the vegetables, 22% of, of them. So for those who are producers, there is a space for uh, getting uh, some of uh, uh, these vegetable and fruit. And um, we've done some studies in terms of uh, what's available on the market. Um, here we see that the crops that are demanded, 47% uh, the, the they like the spice, hot, hot peppers. 35% uh, uh, garden eggs, which is a type of eggplant, so it's um, and then when you come to the least available crops, you find that these hot papers are not really available all the time. And uh, also uh, one, one other crop, jute leaf, that is used in a lot of uh, 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 gumbo type of uh, 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 cuisine, is also missing. You know, when you come to preference, the, uh, most of the people we survey wanted to have fresh food. They can do with frozen, but they prefer fresh. That way they, they can uh, control their, their diets. And then, so we see that what's available on the market right now, it is frozen and 31% uh, fresh. So we got about 60% uh, 
uh, that you know the gap in terms of market availability of fresh food uh, for these uh, um, uh, uh, communities. And so what we did at, uh, with the UDC and uh, Northeastern Sustainable Agriculture Research and Education, we are uh, doing a climate study of these crops, if they can grow in this microclimate here, mid-Atlantic. Uh, so far, the studies are conclusive. We can grow them. Uh, some of them are not able to grow as, as we would like. Uh, we have a hibiscus, a red hibiscus that cannot uh, produce the fruits in time, but we can have the leafy vegetables. But the red hibiscus can be grown in an indoor type of situation, but you can't grow enough for the market. Um, so we, we study the yield, um, uh, they, they do pretty well. Uh, and then we are trying to see if we can grow them in a you know, different way. We use hydroponics, aquaponics, uh, using the fish uh, uh, waste as our fertilizer and they seem to be doing uh, fairly, fairly well. And in terms of outreach to uh, the area, we go do food testing, we go to uh, places where they have events, and we ask people to try it and stuff like that. So this is a picture that shows the farm uh, where we are in uh, Beltsville. Uh, the, this is the UDC uh, uh, Firebird Farm. It is uh, very, almost off the grid. We have solar to pump water, we feed with drip irrigation, we get uh, fertilizer through the, the tilapia that we grow there, and so, and even wasted food, we, we compost it. So it's a, it's a complete cycle. We, we, we think in terms of our, 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 our sustainability. Um, so you, you see pictures of people, we do workshops, we, treat, we, we also train people who want to do, to do growing African or et ethnic food. Um, the, picture, the last picture here shows the pepper, the hot pepper that we, 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 we grow. Uh, we also have people come test the food that uh, we, we, we grow on the farm. And so, and in terms of our outreach, we, um, yeah, we just go to, we do events, we call town halls, we, we, you know, we, we survey, we ask people to test some of these things, and it looks like uh, we, get, we get good response from, from the communities. Uh, so this is like the example of some of the African restaurants that are here, that some of them in D.C. Uh, Bukong Cafe is like a Ghanaian, Nigerian. Uh, it's very popular, people go there. There's Che Dior, which is Senegalese, in College Park. We have a Swahili village in uh, uh, Beltsville, which is Kenyan. So we try to serve all those uh, groups there in terms of growing uh, for them. and. Um, uh, we also found out some of the youth, uh, graduate studies have been looking at the nutrient component of these crops that we're growing, and they have uh, they uh, uh, give us some very positive uh, feedback in terms of uh, uh, nutrient density in these crops. They are very very nutritious. Um, and then uh, we we got some studies going on uh, at least at least. Um, uh, Mayo Clinic, NIH, American Diabetes Association have uh, endorsed some of the crops that we're using, especially the garden egg, which is uh, very good at either um, uh, maintaining weight, it's, it's, not, it's low, diet, low, low calorie, and it has some, uh, some other benefits uh, uh, for diabetic uh, people. So it's, it's also good to know that uh, uh, people are taking up this new uh, crops. So in terms of making money, uh, we as a, as a group, we haven't really done uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, this, this study or at least to make money. But there is a, 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 an opportunity to make money and also care for the environment and also the nutrition and health of our people and also collaborating uh, among the institutions. So thank you very much and if you have any questions, I'll be here. I have some Literature too. Thank you. John, your summary said that you train African immigrant farmers in Fredericksburg. Can you tell me what happens to them after they get trained? Where do they go? Do you help place them? Do they have their own farms? Uh, yeah. Uh, and actually, that's how the accident happened that I got into farming through 
recent immigrant who came in the financial crisis in 2008 and 9. And they asked if they could find a place to garden. And I had no clue about farming. Uh, but I went about learning as much as I could. And then now we I found them a place, a church that had space that they were not using. They gave them the 12 acres. And um, I went about learning about how they're going to market the product. Now, they do have PTO on, where people come and harvest and pay. They also uh, were part of the, I believe they are still part of the Spotsylvania farmer's market. So they've gone, moved on to uh, being farmers in uh, Stafford, Fredericksburg.